This is a CBC, or a complete blood count. Have you ever wondered what all this means? You're about to find out. The blood. Inside the blood you have red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. In the liquid part of the blood called plasma. So the plasma carries around these three cells. In the CBC, let's write out all the components. White blood cells, red blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, this other stuff, we'll get to it. We have your platelets. All of these cells here make up the differential of the CBC. So we're going to start with these values here because these values all describe the red blood cell. We're saving these for last because these are complicated. In the CBC, you have your red blood cell level. So that's the amount of red blood cells in your blood. Pretty straightforward. Hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is a protein that lives inside your red blood cells. And there's a bunch of them. Hemoglobin carries your iron. Fe is the symbol for iron on the periodic table. So hemoglobin carries iron. Iron then also carries your oxygen, and that's how you get oxygen to your body. That is also why you're short of breath when you're anemic, because you're not getting oxygen. The interesting thing about red blood cells is that they're regulated by a hormone called erythropoietin, which is excreted by the kidney. And so that's why a lot of patients on dialysis are on epogen, which is erythropoietin, uh, which is a hormone that stimulates the bone marrow to create red blood cells. So you have to replace that in people with kidney failure because they can no longer make. Well, that takes care of the red blood cell and hemoglobin. So what is hematocrit? Hematocrit is a percentage, and that reflects the percentage of your blood that's made up of red blood cells. So that's usually about 45% of your blood is made up of red blood cells. So that's hematocrit. MCV stands for mean cell volume. Some people say mean corpuscular volume, but this is describing the size of your red blood cells. So if you have a low MCV, you have small red blood cells. If you have a high MCV, you have large red blood cells. MCH is mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and this describes the percentage of your red blood cell that is hemoglobin. Inside the red blood cell has a bunch of hemoglobin, and that's expressed as a percentage. And that is your mean corpuscular hemoglobin. MCHC is your mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, which is basically the average of hemoglobin inside the red blood cells. And then the RDW, red distribution width. So the RDW is corresponding to the volume of the cell. And so when your body makes red blood cells in the bone marrow, they're all kinds of different sizes. If you have blood cells that are a bunch of different sizes, little to big, then that means you have a wide red distribution width. And so that would be an elevated red distribution width. If your red blood cells are basically the same size, maybe a little bigger, a little smaller, the width between the smallest versus the biggest will be low because you don't have a large variation in size. So then we have our platelets. Platelets are also made in the bone marrow. And so these are responsible for stopping bleeding. So if you're bleeding somewhere, these are the first cells that respond to stop the bleeding. And then all of your clotting factors from your liver come and make that blood clot. Last but certainly not least, the white blood cells. So the white blood cells are further differentiated into their different types. And that's what these are here. So the differential or the breakdown of your white blood cells goes like this. Granulocytes, lymphocytes, monocytes. Then the granulocytes are actually further broken down into three more categories. And that's what makes up your neutrophils, eosinophils, and your basophils. There you have it. There's your differential of your CBC. Now I want to clarify something. When supplement companies use the term immune boost, it doesn't really make sense medically because immune boost is technically inflammation. When your immune system's ramped up and boosted, that's an inflammatory response. And technically, decreasing inflammation is immune suppression. So really, it's more accurate to say an appropriate immune response or the correct immune response. If you have a ramped up immune system, that's the mechanism for autoimmune disorders and inflammatory disorders. When it comes to the immune system, what matters is the appropriateness and the timing of the response of the immune system. When I see things marketed as immune boost, it's a little bit of a red flag for me. So it's the appropriateness balance. So anyway, this is constantly working in the background. Every time you get exposed to something, these little guys will fluctuate day to day, minute to minute. That's how your immune system works in the background. So there you have it, folks, the CBC.